I mentioned earlier that my iconic character, uh, the one I played for the longest time, Tandem, was not always a bard. In fact, uh, you couldn't be a bard back in the day, as in bards did not exist, except they kind of did. You could not start as a bard, not really. You had to earn it, and you had to work hard for it. Uh, even, and in fact, you had to you had to have very, very high uh, character attribute requirements before you qualified to be a bard. This was something you had to aspire to. I'm serious. I'm not being sarcastic. You had to spend a long time playing this game, uh, grinding and scraping and clawing your way up to the prestigious ranks of the Wandering Minstrel. So much so, so badass are bards that... The physical and mental requirements um, are basically akin to becoming a double-O agent. Uh, it takes years, sometimes decades of work, before you can learn how to play the guitar. It's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll, you know what I'm saying? So, um, what the hell am I talking about? Most of the times, I don't know. But this one I do. Because, well, I became a bard, but it wasn't easy. Now, that's not to say that my character hasn't undergone, you know, revision. He, he's not the same character all the way through, because obviously the game has changed, you know, a great deal between editions. And really, they had conversion rules between the two editions, but they were stupid. So I've, I've started my character over a number of times. But when my brother, my older brother, was DMing this stuff, we played almost, we played many days out of the week with our, with our friends and stuff like that. So, um... I advanced rather quickly, pretty generous with the with the experience points and the and the loot. So, but still, I earned it, goddammit, and I'm proud of it. So, this is how one becomes the prestigious, elite, usually homeless, uh, uh, exotic bard class in Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, before they were a starting class. So... Let's see what you've got to do. Um, it is buried in the back of the book. Uh, in Appendix 2, uh, Bards. Uh, appendix 1, Druids. Uh, druids were not easily attained either. But uh, Bards, not even, sar again, not sarcastic. Hard to do. How hard? Well, as it says, as this character class subsumes the functions of two other classes fighters and thieves, and then tops them off with magical abilities, it is often not allowed by dungeon masters. You can bring anything you want to this table, but bards, come on, man. Bards are OP. You'll see what I mean in a second. Back in the day, uh, things were very segmented. There wasn't a lot of overlap. Nowadays, in Pathfinder, and one of my favorite games, by the way, uh, you know, fourth edition, third edition, there's a ton of overlap. Fighters can cast spells, no problem. It's just there's like, there's at least 10 different subclasses of fighter that can cast some form of spells, you know, uh, spell sword, spell singer, uh, singer spell, whatever, you know. Pretty much everything has some kind of magical component to it. Um, if you want somebody who has thieving skills, you can just take that stuff. It's, it's, it's doable. But in... A D and D in an old D and D, especially, you had a role and you played that role. This whole mixing, mixing character features and shit. Whoa, that didn't multi class did not happen here. Um, dual classing, of course, did occur, but that's not the same as multi classing. I'm so not making sense, but it makes sense to me. That's all that matters. Um, so, but fighters were fighters. They fought. That's what they do. Uh, you know, thieves, they stole shit, that's what they do. Mages, spells, that's it. There's no overlap. Um, dwarves do what dwarves do, else, because back in the day, in the early, early editions, there were no, there were no races and classes distinction. You were a fighter. Actually, here, you were a fighting man. That's what it's called. You're a fighting man. There's no fighter. Fighting man. There's uh, thieves, uh, mages, and the other three classes are dwarf, elf, and halfling. That was your that was your class was halfling. What do you do? I'm a halfling. 
I'm a hobbit. What else you want me to say? That's I'm a hobbit thief or a hobbit. Fi There's no, no. If you're a if you're a halfling, you're not technically a fighting man. You could fight, but you're not a fighting. Uh, but yeah, it, 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 you're not a fighting woman. If I'm assuming if I'm assuming if you're a woman who's a fighter, you're still a fighting man. That's opening up a whole other can of worms, which unfortunately uh, the old editions of D and D just chomp into heavily with the titanium spork. Uh, the the attribute maximums being different for men and women. Uh, in most cases, the women got the shaft, so to speak, uh, which is no longer, no matter how true or false you might argue it would be, we don't talk about that. It's just do what you want. Um, but bards, they crossed every line. They're fighting men who could steal shit and be sneaky and, and cast spells. These fucking minstrels, man. N no, not allowing it. Cannot be done. This, this, worlds are colliding! Three worlds at once! Can't be done. So, your, it says your DM is the final arbiter as to the inclusion of bards in your campaign. You know what? Sometimes, no. I can't like, no. Wow, if we, we're gonna have bards, we're gonna have bards running all over the place. We're gonna be up to our balls in crusty jugglers. It's, so, okay. A bard must have scores of 15 or better in the following abilities. Strength, wisdom, dexterity, and charisma. I remind you, this is, in a, this is a setting where you had to roll 3d6 in order to qualify. 15 in four of those abilities. That's impossible. I somehow did it, but I went through a number of innkeepers to do it. Didn't cheat, but it took me a while, if that makes sense. Um, oh, God. And you have to have a 12 in intelligence and 10 in constitution. You have nothing under 10. Four 15s. You got to be a bad ass to be a bard. I, so if paladins paladins did not exist yet in this game at least I don't think so I, we never had one in our group I don't think so no oh they did they did I'm sorry I apologize to the to the order of paladins but their their uh, requirements we never had one in our group um, their requirements were had to be human and I got to know. I, as I recall, they have to have a 17 in charisma. Paladin. There's a lot. If if it's not if it's not as uh restrictive, it's bards are like second on the list by a lot. Come on, where is it? I didn't think I'd need to look at this, but okay, paladin. This is a paladin. They are a fighter subclass, but unlike normal fighters, all paladins must be lawful good. They must have a strength of not less than 12, so bards usually can outbench a paladin. Just remember that. Just Hey, you know, a, a, a Sturm Brightblade? Before you go fucking with me, I can fucking... I can squat more than you, alright? This is not gonna be... This is not going to be some some lame ass boxing match where you're going to take me to Suplex City. No, dude, I'm probably bigger than you. I'm the best swordsman in the world, and you're just a paladin. Okay, so they have to have no less than a strength of twelve, a minimum intelligence of nine, a wisdom of thirteen or more, a minimum constitution of nine, and not less than seventeen charisma. So, so the uh, the the paladin will almost certainly be more charismatic than the bard. But when it comes to uh when it comes to military pressing things over their head, the bard is probably going to win that contest. So arm wrestling usually goes to the bard. <laughs> when it comes to uh making friends and influencing people, yeah, you got to go with the paladin. 
they're the good looking ones, not the not the bard who uh, makes a living off of being personable and entertaining. Yeah. Yeah, the aside from the 17 charisma, which is very hard to do on 3D6 on that one particular spot, that's plenty restrictive. But the notion that I still, wow, I can't believe. Well, th here's the other thing. Just because it has minimum requirements up here doesn't mean that your attributes couldn't couldn't change over the course of a campaign. I, in, fact, in fact, attributes easily changed over the course of time here. So, um, but 15 and 4 attributes, a 12 and a 10. Really, it takes a lot to be a paladin in terms of uh, attribute requirements, but aside from the 17 charisma, it's way more doable. And paladin is a starting class, not bards. That's not all. It's not just the... Uh, it's not just the attribute requirement. You cannot start as a bard. Cannot be done. Here's what you have to do. Bards begin play as fighters, and they must exclusively remain fighters until they have achieved at least the fifth level of experience. Anytime thereafter, and in any event prior to attaining eighth level, they must change their class to that of thieves. Again, Sometime between 5th and ninth level of ability, bards must leave off thieving and begin clerical studies as druids. But at this time, they are actually bards, and under druidical tutelage. Bards must fulfill the requirements in all the above classes before progressing to the bard experience table. They must always remain neutral, but can be chaotic, evil, good or lawful if they wish. One Basically, one of their aspects has to be neutral. A bard has to start as a fighter, has to reach 5th level, and some, sometime between 5th and 8th, they switch to thieves, reach 5th level, and sometime before ninth level, become druids. They begin druidical tutelage as druids. They, after, after their tenure as a fighter, become a thief, then they have to give it up. They have to give up thieving. That's what it says. And then go find a fucking druid. And then they can play the guitar. This is amazing. Like, okay, you guys, hang on, I gotta go, I'm gonna go fuck off in the woods for a while. I gotta find some druids. Why? So I can become a bard. You know, imagine, today, you know, when I told my parents that I was making a living essentially as an actor or a comedian, look at you, you're fucking nuts. I don't think my mom still understands what the hell I do. You know, I'm, I'm, I work really hard at this, but still, this is not, it's, let's, hell, an actor... If you're making a living as an actor here or there, but if I told my mom I wanted to be a folk singer, that would typically not be what my mom would have had in mind for me. You know, just I, I'm I'm gonna go I'm gonna go uh, wander the earth playing the guitar. Obviously, the bards here do more than that. They fight evil and shit like that. But no, if if in the world of Dungeons and Dragons, if I told my mom I wanted to be a bard, she'd be so happy. She'd be like, a bard? Well, that's wonderful. You think you have what it takes? I'd be like, well, I'm pretty strong. If if I study hard enough, I could be a bard. It's like, I was I was so hoping that you join the church and become a paladin, but you've really set your sights high. You're going to be a bard. This is what I was thinking, by the way. I was like, fuck paladins. Fuck them. I'm going to be a bard. Because this is like, the, this is the highest, this is the brass ring becoming a bard. You know? Because fifth level fighter, minimum. Fifth level thief, minimum. And then druids. 
You have to go find a race of druids. Nobody knows who they were or what they were doing. But when you want to be a bard, you got to you got to track them down. You got to you got to follow their 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 history which is in mystic runes hewn into the living rock of Stonehenge. Once you found druids and convinced them of your worthiness to be a druid, then you are worthy to call yourself. This makes no sense. Okay, why would you want to? Uh, why would you want to wait? As it is, like it says, you have to be a minimum fifth level fighter, for instance. But before ninth, you have to quit being a fighter. But why would you wait wait for later? Because it's kind of a funky thing about dual classing, which evolved in later editions. But you essentially stopped being a fighter at the level you stopped being a fighter. Meaning, as your character progressed, they get they get better and better bonuses to hit. Uh, their saving throws would improve. But if you stop being a fighter at fifth, your fighter, you know, your your to hit rolls would not improve. As it, it, I don't know if you follow, but like, uh, let's let's see, um, your hit dice, for instance, if you want to keep getting the hit dice as a fighter, uh, your saving throws increase differently depending on the class. Um, so there's there's reasons why you wouldn't want to do it because once you stop being a fighter, you can never grow as a fighter. So if you stop being a fifth level fighter, you're going to be a fifth level fighter forever. So you could be, as long as you do it before you reach ninth or eighth, whatever, prior attaining to eighth level, you got to be a thief. <laughs> then be a druid. So as long as the druids don't ask about your, your, your previous criminal record, you're clear. There's more. Oh, and they have to be, they have to be neutral. One more requirement. Yeah. Um, Experience points from then on are uh, strictly those gained as a bard. All previously earned experience is not considered here. Experience level is likewise that of the bard class only. There is no level beyond the 23rd. 23rd level bard. Levels were a little different back in the day. I keep saying that. Um, the bard gains druidic powers as a druid of the same level with the exception of druidic spells explained below. I aspired to this. I worked hard. So you get... You don't get bard spells. Fuck that. You you are a druid. You cast like a druid. Although, we are getting closer to what our traditional image of a bard is, as being dirty, long-haired hippie who rubs himself in patchouli. And it has those weird braids. So I guess... No. Okay. From then on... Uh, every... One of my favorite parts about AD&D is... Um, you're not a thief. You're never really a thief until you reach what's called name level. Name level, it's ninth level. When you reach name level, you're finally called what your class is. So it's not until ninth level that I'm in the bard class, but I'm not called a bard. There's there's a there's a level title is what it's called. So a first level bard is really called a rhymer. A second level is a lyrist. Third is sonneteer. Fourth, scald. Fifth, rack raid. I don't know throw me uh the, the, the sixth is a troubadour fifth is jongler um eighth hang on yeah eighth minstrel ninth muse wow ninth level for them is like 12 it's supposed to be nine uh minstrel muse lorist bard master bard and then from then on it just goes master bar master bait master bard 13, 14, so it goes on like that. So, for instance, a more relevant example would be uh, like a thief. I always like to use the thief example. So, let's see. Like a paladin, 
Uh, at first level, he's not a paladin, he's a gallant. Then keeper, protector, defender, warder, guardian, chevalier, just a car, then paladin. And they get paladin at ninth level. That's their name level. I, I just always like those little funny names. Oh, uh, uh, fighting fighters had funny uh, level titles. Veteran, warrior, swordsman. Even if you didn't use a sword, you were a swordsman. Uh, hero, swashbuckler, myrmidon, champion, superhero. At eighth level, you were a superhero. And at ninth level, you're a lord. That's still that's still name level for a fighter, but everyone at, once you reach ninth level, you're basically a self-made lord, and everyone has to address you as lord or milady. Let's see, where's thieves? Thief. Ah, so their first it's uh, rogue apprentice, footpad, cut purse, robber, burglar. Sixth level is filcher, sharper, magsman. Ninth level thief. I love these titles. What are you? I'm a sharper. Okay. What are you? I'm a I'm a scald. Is that a person? Yeah, that's fourth level bard. That's still pretty impressive. But anyway, let's see. Um, the other thing is that when you become a bard, you join a bard's college. You have to go to school. Now, Bard's College doesn't always necessarily mean school. It means like, it means like a, a class of bards. Uh, that's not helpful. Uh, a special social academic strata of bards. They're actually very... Um, they're, they're very... There's a lot of layers socially to the bard class. I'm not kidding. You know, they... You... If you're, if you're a first-level Bard College... You don't associate with upperclassmen because they're a higher strata than you, and so there's several levels of of uh, bard colleges. And you do go to college for this, by the way. It takes a lot of training. So, for instance, from first to fourth level, uh, you're in the fuck you can, uh, fuck you can. I never dealt with this when I was playing. We, were, we didn't give a shit about bards. Because you never got to run it. How many bards are there in the world? They're impossible. Bard college? A hundred years would be, They're like the Kwisatz Haderach. You get someone with a unique physical and mental gifts and perseverance to learn to be a bard? That's like one in a million. They're the super being. You actually did not want to fuck with Tandem back in the day. If you were a bard, that was like... That was the... You see a motherfucker carrying a loot? Back the fuck off. He will end you. He will take that fucking loot and shove it up your ass. Actually, he wouldn't. He wants to keep his loot. He'll put it aside and then just beat you until you're jelly. Uh, loot's really expensive, man. I'm not going to shove it up your ass. Get a chair. Whatever. So, yeah, there's... There's the Mac... Fwirmid, the Dos, the Kenaith, the Kli, the Astruth, and the Olam. This must be like Gaelic or something like that. So there's a lot of different colleges. Um, why is that significant? It's not. Um, so it says, college is the important distinction to a bard, and he or she will not associate with a bard of a lesser college. I won't even talk to you. You fucking Dos... Freshman, you, you, Mac Fwirmid, unpronounceable bitch. It's, it's it's the dream of lower classmen bards for senpai to notice them, for upper classmen. You're dirt to me, dirt. I say, don't. You think you think I'm impressed because you're a bard? Please. I've been a bard for 10 years. You ain't seen shit. I guess that's their reasoning. The exception to this rule are the Magna alumni, who will happily aid by advice, ad, by advice and suggestion any other bard of any level. A Magna alumni is a 23rd level bard. That's as high as they go. So apparently, when your bard character has reached enlightenment, has reached demigod status, 
they get the fuck over themselves. And they're finally willing to help a brother out. <laughs> Pardon me. Yeah. At 23rd, they're like, oh my God, I've been such a dickweed. These guys really need help. So hopefully, when you're a bard, if you need mentoring, find a fucking 23rd level bard. If and if if they haven't passed in the fucking legend, 23rd level bard is he'd be the greatest hero known on the earth. You mean how long I'd have to play to be a 20 Jesus? You'd be playing this for decades. Be a 20 played this for decades just to be there. Played a couple of years in the, on this edition anyway. But wow. Okay, so what's the upside? Druidic magic? No, there actually is a reason you may want to do this, aside from the prestige. Um, you get additional languages. Very slowly, I might add. When you start off as a bard, you don't get any. The, uh... Yeah, you don't get any. It's only when you reach fourth level bard that you get an additional language to speak. So you still gotta work. You gotta work your ass off. Um, but there is... Here's the main draw, I guess. Uh, they get the ability uh, to charm. There's a charm percentage associated with each level of bard that increases. The charm percentage is the chance the bard has to successfully cast a charm person or charm monster spell with his or her music. So by playing music, you can essentially charm person or charm monster at will. There's a percentage chance for this. Um, the charming ability does not negate any immunities or the saving throw versus magic. Okay, that's pretty cool. A lot of work for that shit. I'd just become a wizard if I wanted to... Whatever, okay, so I can I can play my guitar and enthrall people with my rendition of Sister Golden Hair. At first level, your percentage chance to do this is 15. It goes up. Uh, at second, it's 20. Third, 22. Fourth, 24. Then 30, 32... It's your odds aren't good up until it's it's a 50-50 shot when you reach 11th level bard. 50-50 to charm people. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, uh, having the ability to charm people and never run out of ammo just by playing your loot is immensely powerful. But again, you got to practice that fucking loot, man. And they have to be willing to sit still long enough for you to to uh, serenade them with Freebird. So, uh, indeed, indeed, a powerful uh, a powerful ability, uh, not one to be easily abused. Very specific, though. I, I guess this is the reason why you would want them at the, you know uh, for negotiation. Well, but first, you guys, before we settle this peace treaty, allow me to serenade you. With uh, with Stairway to Heaven, there's a man, and they're like, <gasps> um. Uh, although if there's an elf around there, they have massive resistances. So they listen to your music and they're not fucking impressed. They're like, oh, dude, I live in Rivendell. There's a motherfucker playing the harp twenty four hours a day. It drove me nuts. Why do you think I left? You loot strumming bitch. And I'm just like, no. I worked hard. This is my job. The last thing is, by the way, starting bards, they don't get the charm thing right away, but starting bards in basically any other edition of D&D &D, get this right off the bat because it's starting class. They get, um, and this is immensely useful. I've done this. I've used this so much. They get legend lore and item knowledge percentage. Um, bardic lore is one of the most massively useful things that I've ever uh, encountered in, whoops, in Dungeons and Dragons. In that it's kind of one of those, it, it's kind of one of those catch all skills where if it's famous or if it's something that has happened, you know, something that might have been uh, scribed down or talked about in, in epic poetry or legends or in, in, famous parts of history, the bard has a percentage chance to know what it is. So for instance, if I'm in a tomb and I see some kind of, uh, uh, like a sword and I'm pretty sure it's magic. 
it doesn't have to be magic, but if it's got some distinctive uh, heraldry or it just has a very unique look, you know, maybe there's a sapphire in the hilt, um, I would then be able to roll a percentage of, of uh, bardic lore and potentially be able to figure out if not maybe if not the abilities of it, the history of it. So I'd be like, oh, well, that would be the sword of uh, of Lance Stormshield. Uh, I, I remember him from the from the humorous song Exploding Lance Stormshield, who uh, drank two potions one day and exploded and killed four other people in the blast. Uh, but he bore this exquisite sword. It's a sword plus two. That's what bardic knowledge would be. Because really, who would possibly who could possibly forget the hilarious ballad of Lance Stormshield and his exploding ass? I, I thought of a I thought of a way that one could survive the uh the gut busting inner explosion. Um what if your your torso did not in fact explode, but there was still an incredibly damaging explosion that took place in there? I imagine that what would happen was that uh, in, your, your body would contain the explosion, but you still damage other one, everyone around you. So I imagine from your mouth and asshole would project tremendous gouts of white hot flame that would incinerate people all around you and cause you grievous damage because one cannot fart 3,000 degree temperature flames out your butthole without really getting maimed. So, and also, you know, breathing fire, just, that's a spicy meatball you just had. Uh, so, there's there's grievous injury all around, and everyone around you gets hurt because you're just, the, the, the jet turbine flying out your ass has, like, throws you up in the air and you're spinning around! Ah! That's how it works. Uh, where was I? I think I'd finished. Um, oh, Bardic Knowledge. Massively useful ability that you get uh, in D&D. It starts off at a low level, but you still get it. Um, third edition, they get it as well. It's, bardic Knowledge is one of those reasons you take being a bard, is for the off chance that you can be the exposition guy. You know, sometimes it's really, really handy to be able to look at, you know, some look at the one ring of power and go, hmm, Bardic Knowledge, wait a minute, and I know what that is. So, really handy. First level, bar, first level in this game, bards get zero. The, the, the ability is unlocked, but it's at zero. Uh, first level, it's 5%. Third level, 7. We are getting rates of diminishing returns here. Remember, this is not as simple as being like 1, 2, 3. You have to level up! This takes levels. And like, all right, I reached third level, and my percentage to my my legend lore has improved to seven. You have any idea how long I've been running around adventuring to get this fucking far? Third level bard at this point, studying with fucking druids, seven. Fuck. This is not worth it. Aside from being able to... The status? And even then, your status doesn't impress anybody. Certainly not upperclassmen. The, the dudes in the... In the... Onstruth Bardic, uh, Bardic College. They don't give a shit about you. Uh, uh, look at that motherfucker and his cheap-ass loot. Ed Harmstrom and pussy. Harpstrom. It's late. So... This is long, long as the road and hard out of hell to become a rock star. You know, wow. It's just really disappointing. You know, you've come all this all this way and the DM is really hopeful. You find this ancient tomb with, you know, weird crests and symbols on it. And there's engravings in some arcane language. And you go, well, I might as well give it a shot with my with my uh, sixth level uh, legend lore of 16%. Oh, gee, I failed. Big fucking shock. That sucks. 
percentage shows the chance the bard has them knowing something about a legendary person, place, or thing, and knowing what a particular magic item is. The latter is limited to weapon armor, potions, scrolls, and items of a magical nature which the bard can employ or which bear magical inscriptions. For all bards know runes, glyphs, characters, symbols, etc. Naturally, any knowledge gained by bards while in their former classes is also retained at all levels. Well, that's a relief. <laughs> um, the weapons they can use. Uh, leather or magical chainmail only. Only. They can't wear chainmail. Magical chainmail only. Uh, they can use the no shields. Club, dagger, dart, javelin, sling, scimitar, spear, staff, and sword. That They will never use poison unless the bard is neutral evil. And they can use flaming oil. So, wow. This is all worth it. I can't wait. A bard always engages in combat at the level he or she attained as a fighter. So if I was reached 5th level, my, my to hit matrix is as a 5th level fighter. That's why you may want to stick with fighter for a while. Uh, a bard is able to function as a thief at the level previously attained. All saving throws are on the most favorable table. However... The actual bard level is considered as that of a druid. <laughs> How did I even make sense of this as a kid? The bard's poetic ability raises the morale of associated creatures by 10%. It likewise can inspire ferocity in attack, so hit probability die rolls are given a bonus of plus one. Yay! Ancient D&D buffs. Note that while engaged in this activity, the bard can engage in melee combat, but not in any singing or spellcasting. So... What I just said was they can uh, read poetry or recite poetry to inspire people to fight harder. But they can't be singing. That is way too hard. So no singing in combat, but I could recite the epic poem of Beowulf. Or the, the epic of Beowulf. That's way more inspiring. But singing? No, nah, fuck it. I can't sing Let the Bodies Hit the Floor. Just, that just won't work. It'll sound stupid. But no, here, uh, let, let's, uh, let me recite the Iliad. Makes sense. Because you're, you're going to hear that over the clash of steel and tigers clawing out my balls. I'm, I'm totally going to be, I'm totally going to be thinking of poetry on the fly as all this is going. Uh, fuck it. Um, the singing and playing of the bard likewise has a chance of charming most creatures. Uh, they must save... They must save versus magic or be charmed and sit entranced while the bard sings. So note that even these creatures not charmed will listen to the bard singing and playing for a full round. So even if it fails, they'll sit and listen for a few seconds. So that's pretty cool. Or if it, I mean, at the very least, at least show a little leg, you know, to give them an excuse, something to look at. You know, flash them... Flash them uh, tandem titties. That would not... Well, that would draw some fascination, but not in that good way. Uh, Charm creatures are subject to suggestion, as if it were the spell of that name. Uh, due to training, a bard has knowledge of many legendary and magical items after first level experience. No, he doesn't. <laughs> they have... After the first level, they have 5%. It depends on what you call... Many legendary... Oh, God. And it's limited to armor, weapons, uh, miscellaneous weapons, miscellaneous magic items, if they are usable by a druid, fighter, or thief. Anything else, they're fucked. Potions, rings, rods. That could, that's so immature. That's... I don't think any D&D player has ever managed to say rod of lordly might without grinning. Bards are able to use magic items which are permitted to druids. Fucking druids, man. I didn't know bards were that isolated to the to Stonehenge. Like, hey, uh, I, I gotta go back, you guys. I, I, I reached third level and I'm gonna... Yeah, at, at, at fifth level, I'm gonna be promoted to the next bards college. So, uh, as, as a matter of practicality, are we gonna play Stonehenge? No, we're not going to play fucking Stonehenge. 
Let's see. If a writing is baneful, treat the bard as the least favorable of his... Oh, if it's a cursed. If, if they're reading something that's cursed, they get the worst of the saving... The most favorable of the saving throws. They can use drums of panic, horns, horns of blasting, lyres of building with double effectiveness, and pipes of the sewer. Can't wait to wrap my lips around that one. That's it. If bards are per are permitted in your campaign, there is a possibility that your DM will also include certain magical items usable only by bards. Well, I, I, I hope so. But we won't talk about that here. That's a bard, ladies and gentlemen. Or... If you want to play a bard, uh, uh, I, I, I would I would pick this one up. They make it a little more accessible, slightly, slightly more accessible, as opposed to having to attain fifth level minimum in two other classes. And it's even more complicated when you talk about what uh, what dual classing entails. Not getting into that here, because that is a fucking lecture for another time. But, whoa. Can't believe I did it. I, I don't think I lasted very long before we updated to the new edition. Because these were the only books we had. We, we, we went to a used bookstore. Because we wanted to save a little money. Uh, and so you could get these... Uh, this may have actually been the later edition, but... Secondhand, if you're looking for D&D or RPG books of any kind, check out the secondhand bookstore. Uh, or like book, uh, ours was called Bookman's. Um, there's not one in Illinois, but you probably know of uh, like a used bookstore. You can actually get really good prices for them. Goodwill is not the place to go for these. I, I have never seen, in fact, any kind of RPG book at a Goodwill. But uh, yeah, any kind, of, uh, any kind of secondhand used bookstore will have a lot of these. I mean a lot. Maybe not this specific edition, but if you're looking for a game, you can find something. Um, you can usually find, like, Shadowrun or anything like that. But man, it ain't easy. You know, it, you laughed at me. You laughed at me when I would boast at being the greatest swordsman in the world. I know you did. When I flexed, when I flexed the, uh, when my flex my peaks, you, you you chortled. Little did you know that when I when somebody can claim to be a bard in truth, and you laugh at them, they will fucking wreck you. That's what I thought. Okay, so next time you see a bard, next time you see a guy in uh, with with a jaunty befeathered hat carrying a lute, you get the fuck out of his way. All right. And if he starts passing the hat around in a in the tavern asking for a tip here or there, you best throw something in there because if he sees that you didn't, it's your ass.